Hello and welcome back YouTube. Last time I left you, we had run our election campaign and canvassed the public figures and we are just waiting now for the first round election which is coming right up in the next couple days. So let's just forward and see what happens. Here we go. First round election results are in. Good evening. The majority of votes have been counted, and we can now give you the first round results. Take a look at this. The Quebec Separatist Party got 5.75%. The Greens, 6.44. Conservatives, 28.08. Liberals, 29.45. And we got 30.29. Huh, in the last poll before the election, we were winning more handily than this. So I... Uh, you know what I think it was? I was going to say it might have been voter fraud by the government. But actually, it's in the latest patch, Eversim introduced this modifier to the elections, the historical percentage, which is based on the percentage that of votes each party got in the last real life election so in Canada's case in 2015 which is good I think uh, it tries to modify you know eliminate huge huge vote swings in just four or five years unfortunately there is a problem with it which is that it's not dynamic so these numbers are gonna modify every election forever in this game uh, I think they should change it so that these numbers are based on the previous election. So that way you should be able to improve your historical percentage each election if you do a better job. But unfortunately you can't right now. So this will, this 20% that we got in 2015 in real life is just going to be our historical modifier forever. So unfortunately in this game, like if you try to play as a green party or something, you could just never win power, I think, because of this modifier. Like no matter how many years you play for. I think. I'm not totally sure. Score for political program, we kicked butt. Look at that. So we had an awesome platform. 69.2%. Score for popularity, we did well again. Really well. 54% to 23 the guy we're facing in the next round for political pro, he got 2.7. And for popularity, 12.4. So he's o he only made it to the second round because of their historical score. Obviously, in real life, the Liberals got 39.5% in the last real election. Score from groups, I guess that means unions and associations. We came in first. It was close, but we won. Score from regions, we came in third. So the NDP doesn't have very many provincial governments. I think only one or two in Canada. And I'll just quickly scroll through the full breakdown. 
you can pause if you want you can see where I finished where each of the candidates finished for each group generally we would do well with the left-leaning and equality groups and the conservatives will do with the more right-wing groups like you know gun the gun lobby stuff like that we did well with the unions which makes sense I think we're the Social Democratic Party. In real life, the NDP is affiliated to the labor unions. The labor unions actually created the party. We didn't do too well with the clergy or the sects. And in the regions, we didn't do too well. Because we don't have any regional, go any provincial governments. We have one or two, maybe. Okay, that's it. So, what does the newspaper say? Yeah, there will be a second round in a few days. The candidates now have a few days for the final round of the election campaign. <laughs> My opponent was at the bedside of his ill mother, widely covered by the media, to try to win some sympathy from the voters. Pathetic. All right, and that's it for Canada. What does our private secretary say? Legislative elections, a turnout of 83%. Wow, very good. Mr. Secretary General. I have the final figures for the participation rate at the elections. 83% of voters exercised their democratic right yesterday. Good. Now, let me just double check. So, did I make a culture promise? Oh, yeah, I did. Uh, to build the International Museum in Quebec. That's too bad, because if I hadn't, then I would use the promise to open up criticism of religions in the debate. So it's a good idea to m keep track, maybe even write down the 11 topics you covered in your promises. And that way you can try to, when you get a chance to choose the final topic in the fourth and final question of the debate, you can choose a new topic. So I'm trying to save education. I didn't talk about education. Yeah, but I will in the debate. On the first three debate questions, though, the topics are chosen by the moderator and your opponent. So they might choose education, which is fine. And then I'll have to just choose another topic. OK. Um, so I'm not really going to do much campaigning. I'm just going to forward the game. I'm not sure what how long it'll be until the debate. Maybe can I see it in my calendar? I think I can actually. I'm not gonna do any extra campaign because I've already maxed out. I had to make sure to get through to the second round, right? Alright, the debate will be on the 30th. So in just three days. Campaign between two rounds, 13% of the population is not interested. These are good numbers, 83% in the first round, only 13% not interested. I'm not sure why the numbers are so good. Usually they're not this good. Mr. Secretary General, the latest INE report indicates that 13% of the population is not very interested in the elections and does not see any di Whoa. Sorry, the debate is starting.
Okay, culture, good, great. What I can do is uh, increase the right to freedom of expression for criticism of religions. So uh, this will be my second culture pro promise, but there's nothing I can do about it. That was the topic chosen by the moderator or the public. Okay, so unfortunately that didn't really help us. People didn't like that promise for some reason. You can see here like a line goes up the graph to show how much support you got for your idea. So he's gonna build a theater in the Yukon. You can see people like it a little bit. So on energy, he's going to build three hydroelectric dams. We must at all and it didn't win him any more support. Broad development of renewable energies. On the one hand, to participate at our level to the victory on global warming, and on the other hand, to viably structure our energetic independence. I will lead and win in this battle. All right, energy is a good topic for us. We didn't make an energy promise before the first round. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to legislate non-conventional gas and oil. In Canada, we have these huge tar sands where they're really wrecking huge swathes of the in, of the environment. In out in Saskatchewan and Alberta, they have these huge open pits that they're digging. And it's causing all kinds of problems: water decontamin, uh, water contamination, air pollution, and it's like just a filthy, dirty, horrible way to get oil. So I'm gonna knock it down from exploitation authorized to tests and exploration authorized exploitation banned. You can see here: non-conventional gas and oil resources include shale gas and oil, sandstone, and oil shale. The global potential for these resources is huge. The methods used to extract these resources, hydraulic fracturing and surface mining, pose an environmental threat causing air and water pollution. Most people on the left in Canada despise the tar sand oil fields. So I'm going to go ahead and promise So that promise was quite popular. I would like some clarification on this matter, which you bandied about, in my opinion, throughout the campaign. Army. Okay, so we didn't make a promise on that yet. We can increase or decrease number of soldiers or their salary. We could build a base or dismantle a base. We can create in conscription, or we could leave the non-proliferation treaty. So I think what I'm going to do is promise a pay raise for the soldiers. Kick it up to 3,700. I guess that's per month. Our national defense is the didn't get me anything, but it didn't cost me either. Some promises will knock you way down. Reinforcing the characteristics of our defense and to making available the means necessary for their credibility towards potential threats. 
Now I get to ask him a question. He's on the center right, so what can I probably nail him on? Something that'll make him look really bad. Immigration or work? In the first term, they did a lot of crummy things on work. Cutting the unemployment benefits and stuff. I think that's what I'm going to try to nail him on. Hopefully he says something stupid. Or should I just do environment? Yeah, he was hard on the environment and sports, wasn't he? Brudeau. I think I'll ask about environment. I think they're pretty bad on the environment. I would like to hear you talk about this subject, as I feel you've been quite vague as to where you stand. So he's going to cut the water treatment even more. Brudeau already cut it like two or three stars. Now he's going to cut another. This is going to kill him. Oh, wow, he gained a tiny bit. Crazy. Some budgetary sacrifices. What is more, in certain domains it is possible to do just as well with less. I will therefore commit to this visionary perspective of debt reduction, which will protect generations to come. Thank you. We are now coming to the end of the debate. I would like to ask both candidates to wrap up now and perhaps share one final promise. So he's going to give money to help employ young people. That'll be popular. We have to do everything, and I mean everything, to win the battle on jobs. This will be the government's priority under my leadership, and I can assure you that we will succeed. Count on me. I will put all my energy into this. All right. So we never talked about education. The promise I was saving for the debate. Usually I like to do the 39 hour work week, but since we already promised that to someone before the campaign, I had to include it in my first round. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build university centers, the maximum, which is only four in Canada, distributed across the full territory. And hopefully it's popular. Oh, very, okay. We kicked this butt in the debate. These are going to be the final scores. So we should win the election now. We won the first round, and we kicked butt in the debate. You can see I'm smiling and he's not. <laughs> Little grin. That's because we're considered the winner of the debate. I didn't get a chance to open this before the debate started, but it was just a warning that it was coming. Mr. Secretary General, I am anxious to remind you that tomorrow evening the face-to-face -face show will take place, during which you'll have to confront Nicolas Letanger in a televised debate hosted by George Kexon. Yeah, that guy hosting was George Kexon, the that I mentioned in a previous episode. Result of TV debate. Gilbert Junot conquered the public. Mr. Secretary General, I have the poll results following the face-to-face -face broadcast. According to the latest estimations, nearly 89% of the viewers found your participation more convincing than Nicolas Latanger's. Cheers, Mr. Secretary General. Okay, I think we're gonna win. Let's move forward to the election. It's usually only about two days after the debate, I think. It doesn't take long. The debate happens like right before it, right before the final round. So what'll happen is basically, I think 
all the other three parties that got knocked in the first round, their f final numbers now will go down a little bit. And then uh, I should gain because I won the debate. And the Liberals might stay around the same or maybe go down a little bit. I'm not sure. We'll see and hope for the best. They do have that much better historical number than we do from the previous election. So I hope we can win. It's difficult now. It's more difficult now in the latest patch, playing as opposition to win. Televised debate. Gilbert, you know, Gilbert, you know, irresistible. Last night, we attended a lively verbal exchange between Nicolas Letanger and Gilbert Junot on the Face to Face show, broadcast live on television. Gilbert Junot lit up the evening with his innovative and popular proposals, eloquence, and natural, undeniable charisma. Indisputably, he has earned many bonus points before the final vote. Minister for Health had a scandal. Well, that should help. 13% population not interested. The Catholic leader just calls on people to vote, but he doesn't tell them who to vote for. Oh, no, he calls on the candidates to work for society's well-being and not to lose sight of basic human values. Yep, and we won the debate. Now, the Catholic community remembers its neutral political position. The religious are called on to vote, but they follow their own conscience, he said. All right, that is the biggest religion in Canada, the Roman Catholic. In this game, anyways. I'm not sure that's true in real life. The election should be coming now. Any moment. Well, there's actually quite a few days in between, though, the debate and the vote. Uh, maybe before it comes, I'll just f show you my final campaign. You can see now, we had 11 rallies. Pop the program is very popular. Yeah, we're the only party promising to s actually cut the deficit. The others are all proposing huge increases. And you can see now the... Uh, the promises I made in the debate are now included, one, two, three, four, in my overall program. So I now have 15 total promises, even though there was only 11 rallies. And I got to cover 14 different topics. Only culture, I did two, which is great. That's fantastic. Okay, when's this election come? Bring it on. Here is the last upright line, Mr. Secretary General. Tomorrow, the second round of the elections takes place, and we will therefore be paying attention to the results the day after tomorrow. So the second round begins tomorrow. <clears throat> I really hope we win. If we can't win this way, then we're gonna, it's awful hard. We ran a perfect campaign, basically. Good evening. The time has come. The preliminary results are in, and we can now reveal the second round results. Bloc Québécois, 4.15. Green Party, 4.44. Conservative 24.79. Oh, we won. The Liberals got 28.82. And we got 37.81. So there you go. We won the election.
to those who voted for us that I wish to pay a special tribute. Thank you, my friends. We will once again prove ourselves worthy of your trust. Yahoo! Here's the final score. Our score for political pro, I think it went up even higher. Because oh yeah, because we did well in the debate. Popularity televised debate, eighty eight point nine. He got eleven point one. All the other candidates get minus one percent, I guess. So did they all drop by one percent compared to the previous round? Maybe. Just gonna scroll through. If you want to see anything, you can just pause. Turn out of eighty-seven percent. Very good. Okay, so now let's just go forward, and soon we will be named, you know, we will become Prime Minister, and this menu at the bottom will all change, because we'll be in charge, and we'll have to start running the country. Right now, it's just about how to be an opponent, right? How to oppose the government, all these options. It's going to change. Legislative elections, your bears, you know his party is the winner. Last night, after the announcement of the second round results, the population applauded Gilbert you know for the victory of his party which becomes National Assembly's majority party with, this is an error, it always says your old number of seats instead of your new number, 44 seats out of 338 altogether. So that's how much we used to have. This is an error, they always do that. Just waiting. Yes, we can. You, legislative elections, you have been elected. The parliament has just gathered to decide the new head of government, Mr. Secretary General. You have been appointed. My sincere congratulations. So in Canada, we vote for members of parliament in our local riding. And then the person, the party that wins the most seats becomes the government, and their leader is the prime minister. Uh, although sometimes there could be a coalition government of two parties if you didn't get 50% of the seats. But here we go. We're in charge. Look at the menu has changed down here. We have all these tabs now to run the country. Here's TV, the election of Gilbert as you know. Okay, so the first speech was just election night at the party headquarters. That is me in Parliament as the new Prime Minister thanking the MPs. And that is going to be the end of the episode. It's going to be the end of the series because I'm going to continue this game, this playthrough, but I'm going to start a new series on governing as Canadian socialists. So, thank you very much for watching this playthrough, Canadian Socialist Opposition. And please join me again next time when I start my new series, Canadian Socialist Government. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel to see the new playthrough when it starts soon. Hopefully within a day. Or, yeah, hopefully by tomorrow. Thanks again. Bye for now.